Hey YouTube! You've probably guessed what these in front of the camera means. Yep, that's right. This is one of the first reviews of the Series 3 blind bag versions of the Thomas & Friends minis made especially for the 70th anniversary of Thomas & Friends. Now, this range mixes up quite a lot by introducing some stuff that I didn't actually think it was going to get a general release, wasn't included on the original brochures, um, but I think it's also starting to show just how massive the Minis collection is and how, like, sometimes they got a little bit too excited, or at least I think so anyway, with some of the themes they were going for and the engines they picked. But anyway, what are we waiting for? Let's do it. So first things first is the new packaging, and that was actually how I knew the new minis were out. Now unfortunately in my uh, dumbness, I didn't actually keep a wrapper of the first series of minis unfortunately. So you're going to have to have this video open side by side to the old ones to see the differences, but I promise you the um, engines that are featured on this front panel here and just like on little bits of the back panel are different to the ones that were featured on the first two series of Thomas Minis. However, the box art was the same, and like, as, as you can see, um, the, the differences aren't super clear, and you've still got that main blue packaging, and the overall packaging is quite similar. So to the unobserving eye of a parent, for example, the fact this is a new wave is probably still not very distinct. What's really different about these is the fact that if we look all the way up and down, there is no code on the outside of the packaging. Instead, in this one, the code has moved to the back. Now, whether that's in response to um, the collectors actually being able to see through the codes and, you know, know which ones they are, so putting them on the back is to hide that a little bit more, make it a bit more of a surprise which one you're getting, or whether that's just the way that the manufacturing process has gone, I'm not exactly sure. But either way, when you're looking for Series 3, this is the biggest thing you want to notice, is where the number is, and if it's on the back, that's what you're looking for. The next thing, packaging-wise, that's changed, that I can compare to the old ones, is the brochure. Now, if you have a look here, we've got this brand new section, which is a brand new series of Thomas Minis. So if we open it up, you'll see that we've still got all the special edition minis that are on the back, so that side has not changed. These are all exactly the same as on the old brochures. What has changed, guys, is this. On the top panel, we've got the special edition um, metallic Thomases. And then instead of the classic series engines, we've got these guys. Yeah, I know, right? These were something which, if you've been paying attention at a San Diego Comic Con, um, a special version of Spencer with a see-through boiler, um, Harley Quinn, Diesel Tan, Superman, Thomas, and like I think it was or oh, someone else. I've forgotten off the top of my head. Um, but there was a special five-pack release that had these superheroes in them, and now they have re-released them to the general public as part of Wave 3. So I think that's really cool. Although, like, it was a bit of a surprise, and obviously means that if you're trying to collect the classic series, unless you've got Series 1 and 2, you're not going to know which ones you need and which ones you don't need. But you can probably figure it out, there is actually a Thomas Minis wiki now, which has a very detailed description of all the different Minis available. So that's how the brochure looks now, compared to the old one, you've got this brand new DC Super Friends section. Alright, now we've got that boring stuff out the side, let's take a look at the Minis themselves. So the first thing I want to note is the pricing for these Minis was quite odd. I mean, usually when you get sales and discounting is when something is, you know, trying to be cleared off the shelves. However, from the time that these minis were released, um, when I saw them least anyway, they were on sale at my local Coles, which is a grocery store, supermarket, whatever you want to call it, uh, for three dot three for five dollars. Now in Australia the minis are usually a three two fifty if you're lucky, but three dollar toy. Um, so three of them for five dollars was a spectacular value. And it actually meant that because I couldn't get two of the figures, um, or two of the figures, two of the engines from the complete series the first time I went, because someone, probably another collector, had already ransacked them out. Um, it did mean that I had to go back the next day, and I actually ended up buying two of the Joker Diesels, because I think he's really cool, because it was going to be cheaper to buy three of them than two. All right, that aside, let's just go through what we've got from the classics. Now, we've got a decent amount of classics in this one, but not as much as we've seen from the other waves. First of all is Emily. Now again, look back to my other videos if you want to see the other Emilys that we've already seen released. So that's, for example, the uh, the Spooky Emily, which we've had come out already. And you can see that Emily's one that I think they did really, really well. I mean, most of them, most of the minis look very awesome. I think they did a very good job of the face in particular. 
I think it evokes both the CGI and the model series, which is really, really nice to see. Um, it's so good, actually, that the face detection on my, on my camera is actually picking up as her face as a, as a human face, so that's cool. Um, the next thing you've got is just really nice line work. I think they've got the colours really nice, the, um, the green with like that chocolate brown running board. Just a very, very well done package overall. And very, very nice to see her and the classics. Because as I've already explained, I think the classics are the ones that um, people want to play with, and then the special ones are the ones people are going to want to display. The next one is Spencer. Now, Spencer's a little bit of a confusing one to me because he's awesome. I think it's a really, really nice Spencer. I'm a big fan of the face. I think they did a good job of it. I think that the colour is really nice. You can't see it quite on here because it is quite um, hard to pick up on camera, but it is a metallic silver. It's not just like a, a grey. It has got a little bit of a shine to it, um, which is why it's distinctly different here than it is to the wheels, although they do all kind of have that flaky metallic look to them. Again, paint deals are really nice. The fact that he's got the writing and also that it's legible um, from a decent distance away is good too. I think that really lifts up his character. Just a very nice. Now, the reason that this Spencer is a little bit so-so is because if I just grab from over here the old school Spencer, you can see that there's actually a very little difference in them. Um, there's a couple of paint jobs that have been inverted. The red is gone from the side, although I didn't realise that that was missing until I got this one. But the biggest thing is just that, as you can see, like I'm trying to compare the colours on screen. You can see there's a very, very slight difference in the colouring. It's more noticeable in real life, um, not under the, the camera lights I've got here, and also um, just through the camera lens. But it is enough so that I think that making Spencer a mono was a little bit of a waste opportunity, um, just because he just doesn't have enough... Like, when you take the, sh the silver out of something that's silver, you end up with grey, which is practically monotone anyway. So I think that was probably a mistake. But that said, I do think this is a really, really nice model of Spencer. Moving on to Bill, or is it Ben? It's definitely Bill. Nice to see that they've got these and the little names are different on them. That's really cool. All the detailing here is excellent. They've got the red wheels. Now that might, um, you know, frustrate some of the older fans who remember the classic series with the not red wheels, the black wheels. I personally think the red wheels look quite nice. Introduce some new colouring. Great details on the top, from the cold little mini coal bunkers at the front to the domes and whistles. Um, my only grievance with this one is I think his dome is a little bit too small, uh, but I have expressed that on other the other Thomas's mini videos when I've looked at the dyno version of this guy and the racer version of this guy. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the funnel's a bit small and the dome's a little bit squashed, but that aside, it's a really nice model. Really like the colours. Again, very, very good job. James is a quick and easy one. Um, took them to Wave 3 to get one of the main, main characters from the seasons out. His face, I still think, is a little bit not quite exactly right. Something about that nose, I just can't quite get my head around. But I still think he's very nice. The contrast between that really dark black, which is like a very solid black, and that very rich red, it looks a bit orange on camera again, but it is a very vibrant, very bright red, is just capturing that James look really, really well. And again, very awesome. Love that little whistle detail that's painted on there. Victor is another nice one to get in the classics. Um, I see we only had him in the hero version before. I think it's really nice because it's got the yellow wheels, which I think really lifts him up and just gives him a bit more spark compared to the, uh, the red wheels of the hero version. If I can just grab him and bring him in, there you go. So you can see they inverted the colours of the body, but I think that this one with the yellow wheels looks just a little bit nicer than the hero version we've got here. Pulling that aside, again, the face on Victor is very, very good. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Line work, great again. Awesome that we get this little um, little Steamworks gear thing recreated on there. Very nice. Paint and line work on these is just spectacular and a very nice addition to the collection. Looking then at Paxton now, and you can see that again, he's very nice. We had the uh, the chill version of him before. Really brief. I love the Paxton face. They did a good job of it. Mine is a little bit off center, I think, but that's not a problem to me. Very, very nice. The same mould is used for all of the, the 08 class shunter diesel engines, so I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, but it looks really nice, and I just like the way on these ones particularly, you can you can kind of see it, but it, the paint just feels very relief on the um, these engines. Maybe it's because they're so flat on the side, but it just gives them a little bit more texture, which is great. Last but not least of the classics is Luke, and I think he looks fantastic, particularly in contrast with his mono version, because obviously the mono version is devoid of any colour. This, guys is how you do a mono version when you have someone who's bright green going to very grey and white. That's cool. That's a good mono version. I already explained in that other video that I really like the Luke mould. Again, 
jam-packed with details from his little front water intake thingos. I'm not exactly sure they are, but they're very prominent in the in the TV show. From all the pipes and the fake riveting and all that gorgeous stuff, um, just from the brightness of the green, the green is a very nice contrast, really well with the black of his running board and the sharpness and crisp whiteness of the printing just looks awesome. So this guy is very, very nice. Right, cool. So, classics are done, out of the way. Let's get on to the interesting ones. So from this series, we've got three of the racer engines, one neon engine, I'll talk about him in a minute. We've got two dino engines, one spooky, one chilling, I think it's called, two of the robo, the two of the mono, and then we've got the special superhero friends, which I'm going to leave to last, just to keep you watching the rest of the video. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. All right, cool. On to the racers. Racer Thomas is one I've wanted for a long time, and yeah, I really, really like this one. It's got a really nice colouring in it. You've got Thomas's baby blue colour to the bright yellow running board, the reddy kind of orange. It is not quite, it's not quite the same as the red red. I'll try and compare them on camera for you. You can see that Edward's wheels there are red red. This is more of an orange red. And that greyness in the wheels gives him a really funky look. Really cool look for Thomas. Really happy with this one. I love the way they've done the paint on the sides there with the flames and the stripe across the top. This one is one, the, probably the heart of the Racer series for me, and definitely very, very cool. Glad to have that one. Looking at the next Racer, we've got Bash or Dash. Oh, I can't remember which one is which. Dash, there you go. Uh, again, a little bit, he's compared to Thomas a little bit of a letdown, mainly because all he's got going for him is the blue stripes. In fairness, that is actually quite a difference from the original. Um, but also, in comparison, not so much a difference, because you can see the running board is the same and the wheels are the same colour. So it is nice that this Thomas, I'm sorry, this Thomas, this um, Logging Loco gets the blue, but isn't quite as good as the Thomas because it's just not as substantial. Diesel is this one, it's very, very cool. Um, I actually thought it was one of the hero ones, and then no, it wasn't. Um, this is Racer Diesel, like Jetpack Diesel. Like, if that's not a cool face that looks actually very, very almost scary and robotic, I don't know what it is. So this guy actually could have fit in into the Robo series as well, I think, personally. Um, very, very nice. The way they've painted it all over means you've got that kind of funny texture I've already talked about in the way that it's painted. Um, but I just think it looks very, very cool. The only thing with this one, I think this one is quite jarring because of the fact he's got paint or and printing all over the front. Having the back not painted on this guy is particularly jarring, whereas other models doesn't matter as much. But as long as you just don't look at the back, this guy, very cool racer. We get the fail out of the way right now. In the same way that I thought there was a failure of the Mono Spencer, this is actually meant to be a Neon Burt. And I have to say, for a minute there I thought it was Ari because I was like, oh, he doesn't look any different. He actually is a little teeny, eeny, little bit different. Let's just, let's just take a look at what those differences are. First things first, he's got yellow wheels. Next thing, it is a brighter yellow, like just, that's used on here, but only just. And then he has these extra little bits on the top painted. Um. No? Can you just, like... Yeah, yeah okay, I think that's all I need to say about that one. Moving on to the dino ones, which I've already talked about, aren't my super favourites. That said, I really like the Steven mould, and so I think that this actually looks really cool. The blue mixed over with the black and yellow gives it a really kind of like, I actually thought that it was kind of more like a mud splattered one, um, and I think that's what that, that, it is meant to be like mud with dino in it, but I actually think this guy looks quite cool, um, and it's got a very sick, I don't mean sick in the terms of like, you know, being like, having the cold or something, a very kind of like, ghoulish kind of look to him. Same as this, um, Percy, I've already said wasn't a massive fan of the James, but if you did like the James, you're going to love the Percy, because it's that same thing of putting the dino head right over the top of him. Uh, quite simple there. Not a massive fan again, but if you're into that, you'll love him. Cool. Moving on to some, some of the ones that I really, really liked. The Robo ones. Yeah, these ones are cool. I love Edward with red wheels. He just looks so bright and so powerful. I love the way they've used a clock, like a digital clock for the two, all these wirings. This here, just yes. Yes, yes, yes. This one, the Robo Edward, I'm a big, big fan of. Same goes for Robo Henry, who's in a fantastically different colour scheme. It's very Robo, very cyber kind of steampunky. I love it. You've got this kind of bronze gold 
this more it's more of a gold it's more of a like a like a faint gold in the wheels you've got that kind of bronzy copper running board black belt body and then the kind of very like metallic green i would call it in the same way that you used to get metallic colored pencils i don't know if anyone else had metallic colored pencils maybe it was just me and that was like what they called green metallic green and that's how it looks and it looks awesome i think he really they really nailed um, Henry, like I love Edward, but I think Henry's uh, infinitely better. I mean, just like look at the details in that printing. That's phenomenal, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Really, really big fan of these two. Coming back, there's Porter. Spooky Porter's kind of weird in the sense that I actually think he looks like a separate engine almost, like not even Porter. Um, just because the paint scheme is so different. The black with the bats and the red and the white. Like he, like he looks, I think with the brow too, I mean, he's actually got a different face. He's got a brow, which he doesn't normally have, and he's actually got fangs, which I think is super cool. I haven't seen any, apart from this one and Diesel, with different faces um, for the different versions. Um, awesome, I think. That's really, really cool. Although, again, like doesn't quite look like Porter. Chillin' Gordon is nice. Um, yeah, I would have liked some white on the wheels, I think. That would have made it a little bit nicer. Um, the one I'm really excited for in this is the one that's coming in the next series, which is the clear like translucent blue Skarloey, I think that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Could be my favourite mini of all time. But this certainly is a very, very cool little little guy, and I'm really, really happy to have him in there. He also, I would note, has a little bit of whiteness. You can't quite see it. There is a faint rim of white around his face that bleeds into the snow on his body. So his face has actually been adjusted too, just not to the extent that, like, Porter's has. Then, moving on to the two and last two monos. We actually, these are actually the complete mono series, which I'll show you at the end um, in this series. Now, we've got Scruff. Scruff, I think, good, because you've gone from that bright green um, to something that's a lot darker. I already expressed that I really like the Scruff model and the fact that he was different because he had a 3D face that wasn't printed on, so he just it just was a really nice face. I thought the Scruff model was really good, so in the mono, cool to have that. Salty, again, quite a good model. His proportions are a little bit off, um, he's just a little bit too tall, but that's okay. Again, in a mono format, he's still very, very nice, very cool to look at. Really, really happy to get these two guys, because I think the um, mono slash old school, I, it is actually called old school, I just call it mono because like monochrome makes most sense to me, um, is really, really nice. By the way, I will um, put a list of the different numbers of which engines um, are in the below because if you actually go onto the wiki, it does actually tell you which blind bag number these guys are, which saves you from trying to go through the video and decipher which one's which. Now, onto these bad boys at the back. Now, as already noted, I've got two Joker Diesel 10s, but let's start with um, possibly the hero, would be suggested by his paint scheme. Na -na! Superhero, Superman, Thomas. Right from the face, he's got that Flick of hair, which I think is so, so comical. Really, really well done. It's even got that stripe of white in it to show that it's like kind of like shiny in 3D. That's really cool. And then we've got a, just an awesome print job. I think they did a cool job of putting the cape over the back. Superman logo on the side. As you can see, because he's got printing all over the side, he's got those dots on him, um, which looks a little bit weird, but I also think actually looks quite cool as well. Um, yeah, really, really nice. This guy is way cooler than I thought he was when I saw him at San Diego Comic Con, and so happy that they've done like superhero versions of these engines. Really, really awesome. Going to go particularly well with the new playset that's coming out. Um, yeah, there's a Thomas Minis playset, um, I was shocked too, um, which involves using this little mechanism that I talked about in the very first review here to connect into some clear pieces of track and have the engines like kind of spiral down a, a track. So that's going to be very cool to have Superman flying. Next one is the Joker. Now this guy is cool for a number of reasons. The biggest one I think is because he has the really, really awesome contrast between his colours. We've got the white and the black, which on the purple, which is a very bright purple, it's not a dull, it's not a dull, rich purple um, that we saw kind of in Millie. It's a bit more brighter than that, a bit more exciting, a bit more crazy. And then he's got the printing on here on the green. This guy again I think is fantastic. He even got the hair. He just suffers a little bit from the way the printing came out. As you can see, um, ugh, that back looks really, really exposed. You know, not, not working for me. The front up here looks a little bit problematic. But since he has green hair, it's not too bad. Where it's bad then is when you go like this. Because you go from literally solid printing and details all the way here. And there's this weird stripe. So they just leave green. So that is a bit bad. 
Um, that said, though, the details they've got on here are fantastic. You've got ha-ha-ha, you've got the spraying thing, you've got the classic Joker cards, all of Diesel 10's claw mechanisms are printed on there, and then you've got more of that on the other side. So the actual printing that's there is very nice. I just think that on this guy it's particularly obvious that it's not there. That said, still very, very cool. And I must note, again, that the green on camera looks quite light. It is actually darker, but it is still that very limey kind of green. All right. Now we hit to Millie, <clears throat> Harley Quinn, sorry, my mistake. Again, this red is um, a little bit like red up, more of a pinky red rather than an orange red, which is what it looks like on camera. Um, but yeah, again, she's got the, utilized the multicolored wheels, which I think looks really, really cool. Um, as you would see if you watch Leo King Video's customizing video, multicolored wheels are pretty awesome. Um, yeah, fantastic looking way they've done that. Looks really good with the black on the bottom, red on the top. Awesome face. Very, very cool. I love the way they've done that. Um... This little part is probably a little bit off-putting because it's just no, no details on her little front boiler section um, or like smoky smoke box section rather. Um, but back here again, the printing is very nice. The weight on the back, because she's got that coal there, doesn't actually look too bad that it stops. Um, but yeah, really cool. Subtle um, in like actuality, like compared to the complexities of Diesel 10, the paint's quite simple. But because this is the Milli mold, which originally looked like this, <laughs> Having it in that red is just so different. Very, very cool. And then last of Series 3, but certainly not least, is Cyborg Spencer. Now, this guy's different from the one from the um, San Diego Comic Con in that this black part at the front here was transparent blue at Comic Con. Now it's black here. Totally fine with me. Um, he looks quite cool with the extra eyes and the robot stuff going on, on the face there. Um, you've got the nice printing along the side. He's in that same silver. It is that same colouring as... The classic one, like, it's exactly the same colours. They just painted over the top of it, so the plastic's all the same. Uh, yep, he's got... They've done a really good job capturing all of that stuff. Yep, just a really nice job. I don't know these characters very well. The only ones I really know are, like, Superman, Batman, and the Joker. And the Joker and Batman I only know from the Dark Knight movies, so I don't have connection with, like, the comics or whatever. Um, so I don't know who this guy is, or Harley Quinn, really, in terms of characters. But they certainly look very cool together. And once you get a couple more heroes and villains... Thomas is going to be having some awesome standoffs. So, now we get to the shot you've all been waiting for. All of the minis up to Series 3 lined up together. Alright. There they are, guys. You've got the four metallics we have so far at the front here. You've got the classics that go here. Then along this second row, as you can see, making them straight is really difficult. We've got three of the heroes, four of the robos, four of the spookies, five of the race. That's all of them. So we've got two of the chillin', five of the dino, which I didn't even realise, three of the neon, five of the old school, and four of the superhero DC friends. Woo! Goodness me. That is a lot of Thomas Joy, but it's also a lot of Thomas Dollars. These things, being $3 toys, obviously aren't are cheap, but when there are over 75 to collect... And I say that over 75 comfortably now, because not only do we have the DC Super Friends, there's also been announced the Advent Calendar Series engines, which I think is six or so Christmas-themed engines. There's also the Warrior Series, which are the engines dressed up like knights in shining armor kind of style. Um, I'm not sure how they're coming packaged, but they are. There's also three new playsets coming. There's the t t Percy's Twist and Turn set, which is what I talked about that utilizes that clip underneath the engines. There's also two launcher sets, which I imagine you use to kind of like like a race car set where you just put them in and the spring-loaded shoots them out forward. But, like, wow, guys, this is awesome. And it's also the kind of thing which I think these minis look good on a shelf. I just don't have the shelf space for them at the moment. But these are the kind of things which look awesome in as a collection, awesome as a group, however you want to characterize them. And so far, I'm still really, really happy with them. The only consideration I have is that obviously there's a lot of these guys and it makes it very hard for a kid to collect. And I still don't think they've done enough work with the packaging so that kids could know which series was which, which is problematic. Because I know, for example, I saw a parent just a few days before Series 3 came out buying an entire box of these and going to the checkout man and saying, look, do you have any more of these out the back of the shop because I want to buy more. So, these are certainly popular. Very, very cool. Let me know what you think. Which series has been your favourite so far? I don't know if I can give myself a favourite series, although I think 
I want to say Series 1, almost just because it was the, that excitement, that new value, um, whereas now it's just more a little bit of, you know, just completing all the collections to making it look really, really nice. Although I'm very keen to see how the playsets turn out. So let me know, have you seen Series 3 around? How much do you pay for your minis? If you're buying them in packets, how many packets do you like to buy? Do you double up your minis if they're in packets so you can collect that extra one that you don't have? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to do all those cool things you do on YouTube, which is like and subscribe and share. And I don't know if you guys, do people share? I don't even know. Whatever. You know how this works probably better than I do. Yeah, do all those things. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my old channel. Make sure to hit up anyone, anything that you think is going to connect with this, anyone who's going to like this. Because as far as I know, this is one of the first reviews of Series 3 on YouTube. Although I can't say for certain that it is the first, because maybe I just don't know how to use YouTube and can't find the videos. Or maybe the new algorithms have just meant that you can't find any decent videos that aren't like three minutes long and full of random colours. Oops, sorry guys, started ranting. Alright, I'm going to end on that note. Thanks very much for watching guys. Let me know your thoughts below. And as always, that's all we've got time for. This is Extreme Trains. <laughs>